when David directs, uh, you know, I asked you this, but um, is it sort of an in-the-moment thing? Do you, do you have rehearsals, and do you do a lot of like rehearsal prep for the scenes, or is it more of a Organic, like they, you know, well, I suppose you know we, we rehearse a, you know one a little bit you know just to see just to see uh, is that your alarm? <laughs> what does that mean? How many people are over there? Now? <laughs> oh well, okay. Um, yeah, he has a. What, what was I saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have rehearsals when you work with me? Yeah, just, uh, yeah. We you get know, over to the camera for this. Where we had to be at a certain moment, but uh, other than that, um, he, he would just inspire us to do to let to let us go, you know, and uh, very freewheeling sort of a situation. And whenever there would be the, you know, David would call uh, a beautiful thing just happened, <laughs> uh, a glorious mistake or a glorious moment that uh, nobody planned for. He would go with. Uh, he he's that he's that kind of a guy. He just likes to. Let things develop and happen the way they happen, and and uh, and then follow through on it and, and embellish it. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that definitely. In terms of when something unexpected happens that some people would perceive as a mistake, he doesn't. He takes that moment to see what is that. What part of the magic is that? How can that, but you know, like the scene, everybody's heard this story in the morgue in the, at the very beginning, when I'm laying in the morgue and the lights are blinking. It's because they were broken. And he made a brilliant choice to keep them that way. Um, you know, so he, he is not attached to, uh, this is how it has to be necessarily, that he's, he has his very clear vision and it's very specific, but then he's also remains open and flexible to this creative force that is part of the storytelling. Yeah, I remember there was a moment in, in the show when I, I'm holding up my daughter's uh, homecoming picture, and I'm, you know, I'm in grief and I'm dancing around with it and getting a little out of hand, and my wife, the, the great Grace and Christie, comes in and, really and, uh, and tries to stop me from dancing with the picture, and I I smash it on the table. I'm like, no, I, I still wear the cigar right here. I'm like, no, I, no, I'm right, right here. And uh, blood got on the picture, and, and I, I started to think of being like a little bit. It was my apocalypse now. <laughs> but, you know, well, the little things like that happen, and as long as you don't uh, suffer too greatly, they, they can be artistically beneficial. question is, with the series of Twin Peaks in general, if there were any themes you particularly enjoyed working through as actors? Any scenes we enjoyed working through? <laughs> <laughs> Just the big one. <laughs> I, I, well, for me, I mean, my shadow self was always present any time I was working, or even still when I work with Laura, the, the shadow is there, um, which I, you know, that's not always the most comfortable work, but it's important for us all to, to do that. And I think David's work really, somehow, whether he intentionally does it or not, um, does mirror that back to us. Does that answer that question at all? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that was a good thing that you said. But, you know, oh, I, you know, I never thought, uh, I never thought themes are, I, I never even thought about Bob when I was playing Leland. You know, it was, uh, I was just always Leland. And, uh, and then when I did Fireball to me, of course, I, I had to think more about Bob, the other half of me, supposedly. You know, um, my other 
personality or the entity that was possessing me, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, I, and I had to go back and forth in, in between the two sometimes, and just from one moment to the next. And so that became uh, more of a challenge in the movie than it was for me in the series. In the series, I, I was pretty much leaving. And, and then that, that uh, moment when I, uh, when I realized that I was the one who killed my daughter, that revelation, that, that hit me with a, a great impact, uh, as well as the water coming down and going up my nose. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a great moment for me. I think also, um, to answer your question, it was very different for me working on it then, because I was 20, 21, 22 years old. So to go back, I, I hadn't seen it um, in 25 years until we did the return and then I went back and I watched everything. So I had not seen anything during that entire time. So I watch it again and I'm, you know, in my late 40s at that point. And I'm a mother and I've had some time on this planet and gone through my own journey as a woman. So I see it and the themes then when I rewatch it now with very, very different eyes, you know, and, um, and there's this burning desire to step in and help. Like, if only these youngsters knew how loved they were, or if only someone would have stepped in when they saw um, a sign that something was off, that something wasn't right, you know? And so um, I actually got really angry when I watched it again. Um, you know, and some of you have probably heard me say this because the statistics of, of this is not, again, in real life, the statistics are not going down, they're going up. Um, and so to watch, it, to watch it again from an, almost an outside perspective, this burning desire to step in and stop it. All the moments that you see when you watch her whole story where someone would have, could have stepped in and stopped it. Well, 
The town's still there, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and then he leaves it at that. <laughs> he said that to me before uh, he dreamed up the third season, so. <laughs> 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 well, more power to him. Gonna turn into a cry. No, no. no. <laughs> I'm having a good time here. Thank you. I love your walking, by the way. Woo! And you all are just wonderful people. Thank you for being here and uh, accepting us somewhat. Huh? You guys Oh, thank you. Thank you. That is very true what you just said. It's amazing we see That's always good to hear. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Uh, a question, I guess, for both of you, but especially for Ms. Lee. Uh, wondering what your theories are about what Laura whispered to Agent Cooper in season three. Oh, I don't have theories about it. I know what she <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Roll cameras. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, it's, uh, it's a real honor to have you here in Milwaukee tonight, uh, and a pleasure to see this movie with you. Um, Fire Walk With Me has some of the most astonishing acting performances I think I've seen in all of film. It, it really is a monument, and I, I think it was worth the effort, personally. I, I, hopefully I speak for everybody. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, after you see the movie, it's, it's clearly an incredibly demanding movie, acting-wise. Um, particularly from your two performances, I was going to ask, uh, was there some amount of hesitation before you agreed to do the movie? Oh, you know, I, I don't know if I want to participate in this because it's so extreme. Or you didn't know what was happening. And, 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 and how do you summon up that, that acting power, you know, in, in some of these scenes? It's just so extreme and powerful. I'm, I'm just so blown away by it. Thank you so much for your unkind words. I like the way he talks about it. Um, <laughs> I work for a... I was, uh, I, I was 100% on board, you know. They just had to say, you want to do it, Ray? And I, yeah, you know. And uh, we were just waiting to get the, the go-ahead. And I think, did you, you felt the same way, didn't you? That yeah, and for me, anything that David would ever ask me to, you know, that I... I mean, I just would jump at the opportunity to work with him doing anything, um, and uh, and to and to work with Ray and Grace and everyone else again. Um, there were I had no hesitation at all. And in terms of the intensity of of the story, I knew that I had my own insecurities about my ability or lack of ability or lack of experience but I knew that I was working with the best. The best actors, the best director, David brings an incredible crew together, an incredible cast. So anywhere that my insecurities felt like I'm not up to it, I knew that I just had to take a deep breath into the hands that I was in. Well, well he earned that Oscar, and I think uh, it's fair to say that part of it is yours. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, um, I just did uh, 
whatever uh, was necessary just to get through the next moment. And I, uh, sometimes I would just go off into a corner by myself and, and just go through uh, what, I, what I was feeling about the scene. And, um, and other times I, I could just sort of uh, ease on through it. it, it you know, it, uh, it changed from, from scene to scene. And, and sometimes the really emotional stuff was easier to do than the less emotional stuff. And, and, uh, so there was no set pattern or routine. You just took every little bit as it came along and, and tried to make the most of it. You know? Yeah, I, I didn't have enough experience at that point to know how to let a character go. I've had to learn that on my own, you know, as the years have gone by. And I don't think it was until it was over that I really let it go. And part of that was just because of the intensity of the shooting schedule. You know, when you're in it like that, for that many hours a day, for that many days in a row, with those kinds of scenes, and then you're done with that day, but you're prepping for the next day or for the next few days. Um, for me, I kind of wasn't out of it um, a lot. I, I was more in it. Um, than out of it while we were actually filming, which in some ways was really wonderful. So yeah. it was afterward that I went through my sort of... Yeah, you're doing 30 or 35 or 40 days in a row and you're able to sustain your character all the way through. And uh, Whereas with the television series, you know, you work five days a week and you have the weekends off and you come back the next week and it's a little different. Um, and the, the movie is that you're able to actually maybe put a little bit more of yourself into it, you know? But Leland was Leland and Laura was Laura and Maddie was Maddie and uh, it didn't matter you know, what framework it was in. Thank you. We want to get to a few more questions. Hello, thank you again. Are you wearing the red room outfit? <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you. I forgot my ring, but I uh, told me to leave it at home. Um, <laughs> I was wondering, Ms. Lee, if you could speak a little bit about what went into your incredibly unique performance as Carrie Page. <laughs> um, again, it's David. Uh, David's direction, because, um, yeah, I just got a phone call one day and he asked me a question and I answered the question and that was the beginning of Carrie. <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, you know, he's so, he's such an artist that um, it's like all mediums go into helping communicate to me who that character is. So I, might have an idea of what I think Carrie is or who Carrie is, and then I see, I go to wardrobe or hair or, right? And then I go to the set and I see where she lives or he starts explaining to me what it's like where she lives or, um, so all these pieces, because he's involved, you know, he's approving wardrobe or not approving wardrobe. So he's a part of this whole painting that's happening. And that painting is translating to me the essence of who this woman is. That didn't really answer the question. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how he does it. And then by the time I go there, I'm like, okay. And I see where I live and what's happening where I live. <laughs> Hi. Um, so you've had a lot of questions about that rascal David tonight. Um, and as two people have worked closely with him, I was wondering if you felt as if you understand where he's actually coming from all the time, <laughs> or if it's still a lot of confusion, because like, we can analyze everything as much as we want, but like I still can't figure out what the hell the green corn means. <laughs> and, um, I almost wonder if you guys being close to the wonder think if you think he even understands everything that he's doing all the time. But do you understand everything you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand all the stuff I'm doing all the time. No. <laughs> no. I don't understand. I don't understand a lot of it. But 
but I know that he, I know, like if he, if he asks me to do something that I may not understand from my head, if I can kind of drop out of my head and get into my body, into the present moment, then I go, Can you talk something more into or not? Pain and sorrow. Okay. And um, Ray, Ray yeah. my nephew just completed his first Holy Communion. Yeah. So I was wondering if I could get a hug. Yeah. Or a brace, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. No. <laughs> Like, if you say, no, I have to only be able to know the whole story in order to work, well, then that's going to be difficult. But, it, but, but knowing what it's like to work with him, it's very liberating in a way. It's like, I can't, I, I don't have the whole script, so I only have this, so all I can do is show up and do my homework and, and be present and, um, and go on, be willing to go on this ride with him. Mm. Go outside of my comfort zone. And we never knew what was going to happen one day to the next, or one week to the next. And that's, uh, that's the way it is in life, isn't it? I mean, we don't know. That's what we're going to do tonight, maybe. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I never thought I'd have the opportunity to talk to one of you, let alone both of you, back when I was in high school and taping the original run. Uh, but um, I just, I've been told I can only ask one question. So, Miss Lee, I was wondering if you would be willing to reveal to us a little bit of Hollywood magic and confirm or deny whether there is such a thing as stunt cocaine. <laughs> I've never heard this term. Like a prop. The, fake, well, it's fake not cocaine. real cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't even work with real liquor, much less real cocaine. Um, no, 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 no. But you, you do. I mean, it's. Never. They, they probably have it better now than 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 it was then because um, you know that, that was a lot of snorting. So trying to figure <laughs> out because whatever you're snorting is still going into your body, it's still going into your bloodstream. Right? That's what always like freaked me out about scenes like that. Like you're yeah. actually snorting something. Yeah. So you so you work with the people with the props masters and everyone else to really try to figure out. Um, what your what you can what your body can handle. Um, so they I think would know I think like yeah, well, and, and they figure it out. Um, I think there was a, a type of vitamin like crushed yeah, like a crushed oh. up vitamin B, um, pat, sugar powder, some kind of uh, powdered sugar, and it also would depend how tight the shot was because certain white powders 
from a certain distance um, look fine, but close up. So you'd use uh, whatever was the hardest on your body, you would only use that in the really tight shots mm -hmm. when you had to. Because even like vitamin B, you're gonna be jacked up on vitamin B or sugar <laughs> or whatever. You know, you have to really, really consciously say um, which shot, when we're doing these scenes, which shot are you actually going to see me snorting in my nose? Because that's the only one then where I really wanna actually snort it. You know, the same thing with people smoking cigarettes or whatever, you know, you, you can, if people don't wanna inhale or smoke, now they don't even use real cigarettes on set, I don't think, they only use those herbal ones, right? But then you were smoking real cigarettes and so, you know, you think, even if you smoke, no one smokes in that amount that you're smoking on a set for 16 hours a day, you know, the whole time, that many takes. So you really try to figure out when are you gonna be close enough that you're gonna see me actually inhale or whatever? Could you, you have to sort of watch, protect your body. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I've never yes. heard the term stunt <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> yeah, cocaine, I'm gonna see. That, you know, that, that would happen later on in your trailer. <laughs> <laughs> joking, I'm joking. Well, thank you for coming to Milwaukee. That is, can you please end on some more elaborate questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, what's your second question? Okay, Mr. Wines, I was wondering if you had any notions or ideas or theories about why your hair changed color on the show. Oh, you got uh, that shock of white hair. Yeah, I thought that was pretty strange myself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I made another movie called, uh, what was it called? It was Sean Connery. Uh, I anyway, Harvey Keitel was in it, and, he, and he, his hair, he wanted his hair to be light like that. And uh, he got a wig. <laughs> That's not what David had me do. <laughs> I went to a beauty shop and went through about six or eight hours of this uh, torture of uh, bleaching my hair down. And rising Sun. Rising Sun, that was the movie, yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and I had to go every two weeks to you know, do my roots to keep the hair sort of white. And after about three months of that, um, my hair was really starting to break off, and, and the show and I actually died just in time to <laughs> save my head of hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Okay, everybody cheer real loud. <laughs>